Next, I'm going to take something good and make it even better. I'm going to use the BCC Lens Blur as a transition in BCC Lens Transition. So let me apply that first to the middle here. Okay, so it's, there we go. There's our lens blur effect. Uh, here is the destination clip. So you can see where those other highlights are coming from. Now, because this is a BCC transition, it is fully automated. So all I had to do is apply it, and it can fully automate the length of the clip. Okay, now if that wasn't cool enough, you can actually customize the auto animation using the tuning curve here. Okay, so here is the transition represented as a line. And I can hold in to delay the transition. I can hold out to make it end faster. I can smooth it out by using the ease parameters here. I can make it more abrupt or you know much more gradual. And all of this will still be fully automated when I'm done without having to keyframe any of this. All right, so let's turn that off, go back into it. Okay, check it out, a more controlled transition, but still fully automated. You can also do it fully manually if you want in percent done mode. Okay, another really cool thing about the lens blur effect as a transition is the ability to change how it applies to the two layers. So maybe I only want the lens blur to happen on the incoming layer. See, now when I scrub through, it gives it like a totally different kind of feel. It's like you're coming out of a dream. Like, man, I dreamt I was driving, but really, I was driving at night. So it's like scary to do that. But with a filter, it's safe because it didn't really happen, hopefully. All right, anyway, so uh, this is a really good looking transition. Try not to overdo it, but if you do, you know, I won't blame you because it is pretty cool. Okay, the last lens filter, I promise, is BCC Lens Shape. Now this is very similar to the lens blur in terms of adjustments and parameters, except instead of an iris, it lets you create your own lens shape. So here we've used the uh, Avid logo, actually, as a lens shape. You can view it separately to see the alpha map here. You can create a lens shape from alpha maps or luminance values or RGB values. Uh, it's also really fun to type something and then use that as your lens shape to be ironic anyway. So this added ability to create your own lens shape is really an icing on the cake to the set of lens filters in BCC7. The next new filter in BCC7 is called Beat Reactor. This awesome new feature can be used to generate keyframes based on an audio track within the AE composition. These keyframes can then be linked to other parameters in your comp, basically to any other filter in AE that can support keyframes. First, let's take a look at the Beat Reactor as an integrated feature in pre-existing filters. So here we see a snowboarder, and I have some uh, music in the background. L let's listen to that. Okay, now I'm going to use two pre-existing BCC filters and use Beat Reactor with them to make an automated effect out of this uh, music track. So first I'm going to use the Gaussian Blur filter, which I did kind of uh, dump on earlier. So let's be nice to it and give it a shining example for Beat Reactor. Okay, one of the other features I've used here is a Pixel Chooser, another pre-existing BCC effect, so I'm only uh, using some of the values in the image. Turn it back on. Okay, now Beat Reactor is this last parameter down here. I have selected the audio file here. I have looked at the audio graph. So you can see this is the uh, waveform for the audio. And this boxed off section here is the part that I am focusing on. So this is the only part that the filter is going to pay attention to right here. So if any bars go in there, it's going to change the filter. All right, so we've got that set up. And we've also set it to apply to the vertical blur in the image. So if I turn that off and just preview the result now with the audio. OK, check it out. Instantaneous, musically synced effect. And look how easy this is. I can just change that. Maybe I want the horizontal blur instead. Oh, all right then. I can do that. Imagine if I had to do this manually, I'd have to create all new keyframes, but with Beat Reactor, it's really a snap, and no pun intended. Okay, so let's turn that back into the vertical blur. Now let's add a glow effect on top of this. So here's the BCC glow filter. 
We've used another pre-existing BCC feature, which is the motion tracker. You can see uh, the motion path frames here. So I've tracked the snowboarder, and you can actually see the glow is pulsating. So the glow has already been synced up with the music, according to Beat Reactor. This time, we've set it up a little differently, though. So if I go into the Beat Reactor, you can see that I'm using it twice on glow intensity. So you can use one audio track and use it like three different times in the same filter. So that's really handy in case you want to do more than one effect. Um, here I'm using the same box I had before. So you can see okay, down here where you're sampling the same area, but I'm also, also sampling the bass in the music and I'm sampling that in these other parameters here. So now, let's see how this looks with both filters applied, both reacting to the beat. Okay, look how that glow comes on with the bass drum and the blur is still doing its own thing. It's a really interesting looking uh, effect and honestly, even without the music there, this would be kind of a handy way to create keyframes without, you know, doing it manually. Okay, next I'm going to use the standalone beat reactor on another favorite, the extruded text filter from BCC6. Okay, so here's our text. We're going to use the same audio track. So the text isn't doing anything. We could try to move it manually, or we can just set it to music. So let's do that. So we have our beat reactor again. Now the standalone is pretty much the same as the integrated in terms of controls, except you have to generate keyframes. So you select your audio, audio track here. And then you just say, OK, and you get this message. It says, all right. And now it's where it was before. You have all these keyframes here, which is just matching the beat. Another nice thing is that you can see how the keyframes fall off. So if I want to look at the uh, individual rhythm here, I can see that the keyframes are falling off gradually. And I can, can, cha I can change that. I can make it a linear uh, degradation. Check that out. Or I can make it a uh, sustaining set of keyframes. Okay, again, if you use After Effects and you keyframe a lot, this should mean something to you. And if not, well, it will. Okay, so there's that. That's just kind of messing around. Now, to apply it to another filter, remember, this filter doesn't have Beat Reactor built into it, but check this out. I'm going to take these three values and add an expression to each one and just link to the different Beat Reactor values here. Okay, so I'm linking the orientation, the position in Z-Space, and the master jitter amount, and check this out. The applications of Beat Reactor go so far beyond what I can show you right now. Just picture any parameter, any filter that has keyframes, you can use with Beat Reactor. So it could save a ton of time if you're doing like anything synced to music, like a music video. You can even use it for sound effects. And in some cases, I've used it for lip syncing, kind of like this. But anyway, I'm getting carried away. Um, it's a fun filter, but let's move on.